Good morning, everyone. Uh, and yes, I'm Simon Hayes. I'm the CEO of KPS. Horizontal axis wind turbines have been in the vanguard of the significant deployment of new renewable generation, particularly in developed nations. Onshore, uh, they've been deployed at scale across a good number of sites, but they still need an element of subsidy, even though the costs are coming right down. And the majority of good sites have already been developed, and therefore the potential is just for repowering in the future. As we go offshore, the limitations for seabed founding, which is where the technology is today, is water depths not exceeding 30 metres. They still require significant subsidy. And although the projections for costs are to come down in the next five years to a point where it's potentially close to subsidy-free, that has not yet been achieved. And again, those sites which are possible to develop, by and large, have already been developed. Floating offshore wind in deep waters has great potential, and horizontal axis wind turbines have demonstrated this, so the high wind project off the uh, northwest, northeast coast of Scotland has done so. But it requires significant subsidy, uh, and uh, it, it's hard to envisage how ultimately that will become commercially viable without a form of subsidy. Additionally for wind turbines, they, they draw on the winds which are close to the ground and are subjected to roughness from that ground. And it's, it's not just onshore, it's also offshore as well. And if, if one can take the height, whoops, can I go back? If one can take the height to about 100 meters or more above what the tallest tips of the tallest turbines are, one can get wind resources which are significantly greater and more stable. And even though turbines are getting larger and larger, particularly offshore, there is an absolute limit to how high that tip height can go. So clearly there's demand for additional forms of renewable generation, but that generation has to be without subsidy. It has to, has to be at, at as low a cost as possible. It has to uh, be able to access the wind speeds at greater heights, and it has to be able to be deployed in a floating offshore scenario. So at KPS, we are developing such a solution, a form of renewable energy generation which reduces the costs and can access wind speeds at greater heights. And we're doing this using a technology which was developed by the Chinese over 2,000 years ago, and that is to use kites. But we're not using conventional kites. We're using kites which draw on the latest technology for materials, for avionics through drones, uh, and, for, um, and for propulsion, for automatic launch and land. I spoke about the potential market for deep water offshore, which hasn't yet been tapped. So we estimate at least 12 gigawatts by 2013 is, is a reasonable estimate of the demand. And the four main areas, offshore, close, deep water, but close to, close to shore in Japan, South Korea, off the northwest of Scotland and Ireland, uh, and off the east coast of the US and the west coast of the US. Kite Power Systems was founded in 2011. We've got uh, a staff of, uh, we're actually 34 now, full-time equivalent, of which 28 are our engineers or technical people, and of those, eight are our operations team down in Stranra in the southwest of Scotland, where we do our flying testing. Our solution is based on a single generator uh, mounted uh, adjacent to a base plate, and from that base plate, two kites will fly, one on a power stroke at any one time, and one being recovered. And the kite which is flying the power stroke flies across the wind, so its speed through the wind, through the, wind, or through the air, is significantly greater than the speed of the tether, uh, which is, which is uh, putting tension and turning the drum to generate the electricity. The kite which, be, which is being recovered uses significantly less energy than is being generated, less than 10%. We use a hybrid wing, which is a combination of, of carbons and materials akin to those used in microlites. We have IP protection on, uh, on our, our, our innovative ideas, and we've proven it at small scale. Our next step is to develop a 500 kilowatt prototype, to develop that to a beta product, deploy it at, uh, at, a, at an array site, uh, and then start to ship units in 2023 onshore, and then to develop the 3 megawatt offshore system. As Jan said, we closed a funding round at the end of 2016, which was 7 million. That included Shell, Eon, Schlumberger, and Scottish Enterprise. And we also got over a million in grant from the UK and the Scottish governments. We're now looking for a, an A2 round, 
We have 3.5 million uh, offered by our existing funders, and we're looking for an additional 3.5 from new investors. Thank you for your attention. Uh, please speak to me in the break or contact me through the website details if you want to know more about our exciting technology product. Thank you, Jan.